Hey, my name is Alex, and this is lesson 18 for seventh grade math. Uh, for this first part, you need to use zero product property. So basically, this is stating that if you're multiplying like uh, two or more things, basically, like let's say it's like A and B, and this is equal to zero, then either both of these both A and B are equal to zero or one of them is equal to zero, right? Because we know that anything times zero is just zero, right? Like you could substitute three or whatever into X and it'll still be zero. And zero times zero is zero. And those are the two cases in which a product can be zero. So in the zero product property, we could do number one here as an example, x minus eight times x minus three equals zero. You set both equal to zero, x minus three equals zero. So in this case, if we're to write it in this form, it's a a equal to zero and b equal to zero, and then we would solve. So here for number one, we would solve for x in both of these cases. So it will be x equals eight because you move the eight over. And then you move the three over here, so it just becomes x equals three. So your answer is x equals eight or x equals three, basically. And it's because if you substitute eight into this, right, it'll be eight minus eight times eight minus three equals zero, right? And eight minus eight is zero and eight minus three is five. So it's zero times five equals zero. And we know that zero times five equals zero. So we know this is true. And this is one of the cases in which I was talking about. So it's either both of these are zero or one of them is zero. So that's why we just set them both equal to zero and just solve for it. So number two here, we have x times x minus two equals zero. We did the same thing here. We just set both of these equal to zero. So it's x equals zero or x minus two equals zero. And the x is already isolated for this. So it's x equals zero. And here we move the two over to isolate the x. So it's x equals two. So x equals zero or x equals two is going to be your answer for number two. Okay, so the next part is factoring out polynomials. And if you've already learned the greatest common factor, that's basically what we're doing. The greatest common factor. We're just finding the greatest common factor and then just pulling it out from the rest of the equation. So for number one, we have 2x squared plus 4x, right? <laughs> and the greatest common factor, uh, or I guess it would be the greatest common monomial factor, technically, uh, for this problem would be just 2x. And if you want to write it out and figure out how we get that, you could kind of just write it out as like two times one times x times x plus two times two times x. This is a long but a good way to start learning how to factor, right? Because here you could see what you could pull out. And both of these terms have two x in common. So you could take out a two x and you're left with uh, one times x or just x plus just two. So this will be your uh, answer. So basically, like, if you're to find like the greatest common factor of like 35 and 15, right? Like in school, like you, you should have already learned this where it's like seven and five and like five and three, right? And then the greatest common factor would be just five. It's this, it's basically the same thing, except now you're just adding the the variables and you're pulling it out from the rest of the equation. So for number two, we have three x squared plus four x to the power of seven. Uh, here we have three times x times x. Oops, this is a times. Plus two times two times x times x times x times x times x times x times x. So here the greatest common uh, monomial factor or what you could factor out is just x squared because there's nothing common between the coefficients. We have three and four, so that doesn't work. So you could pull out an x squared and you're left with three 
plus 4x to the power of 5 as your answer. Okay, so this next section is the opposite of what we were doing previously with factoring. We're multiplying the polynomial. So for number one, uh, this is pretty easy because you only have one, you're multiplying it just by x. So in this case, you would just distribute. So we have x times 2x squared minus 3x plus 9. So you're multiplying this whole thing by x. So basically, you could just multiply these individual individually by x. So first, you can multiply x with 2x squared. So it just becomes 2x to the power of 3, right? You have a 2 times x times x. And then you're multiplying another x on top of this. So it just becomes 2x to the power of 3. Um, and then you can multiply negative 3x by x, so it becomes negative 3x squared. Then you, you can multiply the 9 with the x, so it'll become plus 9x. So that'll be your answer. It's just a distribution. So number 2, uh, we have 4y times negative y cubed minus 2y minus 1. So here, it's the same thing, just distribute individually. So it becomes negative 4y to the power of 4 minus 8y squared minus 4y as your answer for number 2. Okay, uh, the next page here. Now we have a little bit something different, and we could use something called FOIL, which is just first outside, inside, and then last. So here, I can multiply the first terms together, so it becomes 12k squared. To multiply the outside terms together, so it's 3k times 3, which is just plus 9k. I multiply the inside terms together, so it becomes minus 4k. To multiply the last terms together, so it becomes negative 1 times 3, which is just negative 3. And then if you combine the like terms in the middle, it just becomes 12k squared plus 5k minus 3. Okay. And then number 8, we have the same thing, just use FOIL. So first, becomes 4b squared outside, negative 28b. And then inside, negative 3b. And Last is plus 21. So this becomes 4b squared minus 31b plus 21. And that'll be your final answer for number eight.